Hey guys, uh, this is Nick Murray, and welcome to Trailer Sound. Um, this is our uh, sixth episode, and we've been away for a couple weeks. I just moved here from Salt Lake City. I'm in Los Angeles now in my new studio in North Hollywood. And uh, really excited for today's show. We've got a great show coming up. Um, but first, I want to go ahead and introduce our sponsors for the show. Our first sponsor is Sonokinetic. Um, make sure to check out sonokinetic.net. These guys make some great samples. Um, their newest product is called Decapo, and it is a multi-sampled symphonic orchestra. Um, they make great stuff. This Decapo one is um, different orchestral sec sections all together, and it sounds amazing. And they got some really great interface and um, graphic design too. Really fun stuff to use. Uh, make sure to check out sonokinetic.net. Um, also sponsoring the show is Switch Trailer Music. Um, the new album's trailer, Dark Matter, drops tomorrow, so make sure to um, check out facebook.com slash switch trailer music tomorrow to see the Dark Matter trailer. So our guest today is Agus Gonzalez Lancharo, and that is probably the worst butchering of his name ever. Um, however, he's an excellent composer, and his company, Really Slow Motion Music and Sound Design, um, is quickly rising to be one of the top trailer music companies in just a matter of months. Um, they've recently had placements in uh, spots for Star Trek Into Darkness, World War Z, Oblivion, and After Earth. Um, so I would like to introduce Agus. Agus, how's it going? Hello. Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us on Trailers. My pleasure. Just thanks for inviting me. So tell us where you where you are and uh, where you're chatting with us from, and a little bit about you. Uh, right now, I'm in Barcelona, in Spain, in my childhood home, in my place where everything started actually with me, music and stuff. I'm I'm living in London. I've been living there for eight years, and but now it's just having some break, a couple of weeks break, and then. It, get back home and do some work for all the summer and next releases and and so on. Excellent. And uh, so you grew up in Barcelona, and um, yep. how did you decide to go out to uh, to London? Was that a decision for music, for work, or were you out there and then got down this path? No, it was purely for music. I was uh, twenty one. Uh, and I was doing uh, um, engineering in telecommunications in Barcelona, as well as music in some, like one of the greatest uh, music schools in, in Spain, which happens to be in Barcelona. And it, 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 it reached the date where, where I had to decide what I was going to do with my life for the rest of like next 70 years of my life. And then just music won. Uh, so yeah, in Spain there were uh, great um, music schools, but um, it wasn't quite there for for the level of teaching and then for the um, for the industry um, standard that I was looking for. So that actually just 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 left it on the U.S whether moving to the US or the UK. Mm -hmm. And just for personal reasons, I, I decided to, to go to the UK as closest and stuff. Right. But I... Okay, uh, sorry about that. Internet connection's a little bit different here than my old studio. Um, anyway, pick up where you were. you were. You decided to go to the UK, and then what? Yep. And then just started, because I, I, I didn't mention, but I, I, I am a guitarist. My first instrument is guitar. I've been doing uh, guitar work professionally for 10 years now. And um, yeah, I went to London, which is one of the, it's the capital of music in, in Europe. And it, it used to be, or maybe it still is, uh, the biggest city as well as LA and New York, maybe in Nashville of music right. in the world. So I, I, I thought that's a good place to be. So I went there with nothing. I quit my, my, my studies in Barcelona. I went there with my suitcase and my guitar. And that's it. 
and then I just joined university and just playing, playing guitar, music, everything. And it's funny thing that I'm not playing guitar anymore. I just quit since my last tour last week, last year. And I'm doing now something completely different. But guitar was just, for me, it was an instrument because it is an instrument, a guitar is an instrument. But uh, it was purely an instrument for me. I, I, I was going to be happy in, in any music related uh, work, job or whatever you call it. So um, I, I, I just did some uh, guitar for, for 10 years almost. And then I finished the degree of guitar. I took a year uh, with one of my teachers, which uh, was pretty inspiring. He's now one of the top composers uh, for BBC in, in the UK. He's doing great shows in there. And he took under uh, his wing, he took me under his wing to do some orchestration and counterpoint and uh, orchestral stuff. And uh, slowly I, I just was putting aside my guitar and moving to, to the orchestral lands with him. I, I took uh, weekly um, lessons with him at his place, which was like really a, a luxury. He has no time and he just took took me there and, wow. and, and told me. And I, I have, I was too brave back then because I had no, I had just uh, guitar and, and contemporary music, uh, popular music, rock, jazz, blues, background. So I told him, what if I know you're gonna call me crazy or anything even worse, uh, but uh, I, I said, look, in the Royal College of Music in London, there is this master's in composing for film and TV. And it was going to happen, the, the deadline for, for our entries was going to happen in like three or four months time mm -hmm. from that date. And I said, look, I don't have any idea of orchestration or, or anything, but just, I want to get in to do that, um, to do that uh, course in there, which is pretty brave thing to do because the, the level is so high. Uh -huh. He was like, okay, <laughs> you, you're really mad. Uh, we tried and I did, but it was too expensive. And uh, then I, I, in the meantime, I was still doing my tours around Europe with rock bands. And um, I was getting tired and tired because, uh, you know, it's, 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 it, it, the, the rock um, life could be um, really fun to talk about. But... If you don't do it at the very high level, it's not so fun. Uh -huh. It's different place, like but really shit travels and like schedules really tight. And I did get tired. I'm still young. I'm not even thirty. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still. Young. So I might be old in that side of 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 thinking things. And then so since I was getting kind of bored of of the guitar thing and rock thing and session thing. I, my, my my orchestral and uh, film score was growing up. I, 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 I started doing some short films and doing stuff just for me, for, for, my, for my enjoyment. And then guitar was going down. And then it took, uh, I started to, uh, to uh, work for one trailer music house uh, based in LA. As a composer, okay. I just don't know how I did it, but I actually did some pitch uh, for uh, big movies. I I didn't um, win anything, okay. But I started to think, okay, maybe um, I can. I didn't mention something. For five years, I I've been editor in chief for a publishing company that deals with um, uh, magazines. It's in based in Spain, but I do it from London. Mm -hmm. Uh, we manage, uh, we, we do um, magazines for guitarists, for bassists, and for drummers. So being editor-in-chief is pretty similar to managing um, a trailer music house. As you manage, you have to, to tell people to do stuff mm -hmm. and under supervision and talk to them because in the, at the end of the day, they, they're doing the music for you. And they're doing an article for you. Right, right. So it's just you have to 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 be with them, just trying to accomplish um, a mission, 
uh, and uh, to achieve a goal. And so you had I, the business experience I, and the music experience exactly. when you decided and to put them I, together. Yeah, and and yeah, yeah, that, that's that's summing up pretty perfectly. Because when I started doing the 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 pitches for for this uh, Charter Music House. I thought, hang on, this is pretty similar to what I've been doing for years now. So uh, the back of uh, trailer music just was inside of me already. So uh, I thought this is this is what I want to do at least for for a few years. Yeah. So I, I started to to think uh, I don't want to do it uh, like dodgy or midway or I just want to do it big and good and properly and start from from top. I know you can be crazy. You know, you you have your your stuff going, and you've been in trailer industry for years. And you know, it's it's really tough to get there. Yeah. But I thought, mm, why? If if you know what knock, what what doors to, you're going to knock, and what to do, and you gather nice people, talented people to do music with you, not for you. I say music with with mm -hmm. you because. We have like really, really friendly relationship. We are actually friends, uh -huh. and um, and I thought this this can be done. Like like going there, just be on top, relatively. Uh, if that's even a word in English, sorry. Uh, quick. Yeah. So so yeah, I started to 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 that was they started this thing in October to think about this thing last October, which is pretty pretty close in time. Right. So for the next. Three four months we started with with Ivan Torren, with Vivian Sherva, with Attila, Attila uh, some other people. We are up to twelve, I think now. And um, uh, we started to 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 do things, to put things. It was pretty slowly because I couldn't um, pay in advance anything. Right. And if if you go with with proper and talented composers, and if they're so busy. And if you don't uh, offer advance, what else you can offer? Just goodwill. Yeah. Good words and, and, and hope it pays off. To, yeah, trying trying to to not convince them to to build a, a bond, a trustful of relationship. So you started. And, so you decided to start really slow motion. Um, I do want to go ahead and play um, your first album promo video in a second. Um, but before yeah. we show that, can you just explain um, what does really slow motion mean and how did that come to be the brand of your company? Do you mean the name? Yes. As a name, it's just I like uh, paradox in, in names and stuff. And uh, it was, uh, for me, since since I've been interested in film scores and films since I was little, I always thought of small slow motion uh, images like pretty musical for some reason uh -huh. could be nice could be really aggressive could be melodic uh, overwhelming whatever and I thought maybe it's it's not for the other people but for me it totally makes sense slow motion means music for me when when I when I look at it and also it was a very um a very film term slow motion is at the end of the day is image right right and we are going in the image uh industry yeah so for me it was musical and the name was uh image so it, it totally makes sense for me maybe it doesn't for you no no it's music. fine it's, it's a good I, explanation I get, I get asked this this question and maybe it's just hang on for me it makes sense <laughs> why are you asking me <laughs> but no but i can understand like you, 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 something you know, like maybe because really slow motion music would be like playing a violin like this yeah. or something. But you listen to the music and it's, you know, full on epic, um, you know, really big stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's why I said I love Paradox. That's that's also another thing I like. It's just this is fast music. Sometimes. Right. And, and this is really slow. It's not even slow motion. It's really slow yeah. motion. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a listen here. Um, your first album is called Cosmogony. And um, let's uh, watch the promo video first so we can, uh, so everyone can hear what we're even talking about. And then you can tell us a little bit about the album and the different composers and stuff like that. So here is uh, Really Slow Motion's album, Cosmogony. 
Okay, I guess we're back with you here. Um, yep. So tell us a little bit about Cosmogony. Um, is most of that music yours? Or are there other composers involved? Um, and do you collaborate with other composers? Or how does that work? Uh, there's no track uh, fully mine. And some of them were written before um, the concept of Cosmogony. Uh, maybe half of it it was done by my by my breath, uh, for my breath, and I usually I, I I let the composers pretty free because um, when I say to someone that I want him to to do some stuff for for real slow motion, I really trust him. So it's just because um, you know as a composer, maybe some people like deadlines and stuff, but. And they like to work for 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 a deadline, but they but some others don't. Mm -hmm. So you have to to sometimes to 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 discover the way every composer works. So if if they they like to be pressured or they like to be free, um, you have to to have this emotional and psychological uh, thing to 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 deal with every with each composer. And they are really nice people. They're really helpful, and if you build this bond we're talking about, and um, they really give it all to you. And um, when I have to give feedback, sometimes it's like this is this track is perfect. I, I really don't need to say anything, mm -hmm. but I feel the need of saying something, mm -hmm. you know, to 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 make them feel they're in and we're doing something together right. but sometimes i just overdo it because it's like i shouldn't be saying anything right there's a great and um uh so then those guitar tracks we hear things. in those are is that you on guitar or is that no, the other no, composers no, 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 okay not for, not for this actually the this guitar is in shredder which is the one that has been played the most so far is actually attila okay. playing his his guitarist his has his house his metal boogie uh, head <laughs> and his his guitars and is doing it himself he's he's an engineer a uh, sound engineer so he's Great. he he knows his shit yeah yeah he knows his yeah. and um, uh, yeah and actually because at the, at the same time I started to 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 try to build a marketing and networking thing for the. Um, industry we were uh, aiming for and that took a lot of hours in research mm -hmm. and the rest of hours that were not research was talking to the composers so at the end of the day I, I tried to do three tracks as a composer and I didn't finish any oh. anything <laughs> I just couldn't I just couldn't, I just couldn't. Yeah. I, I actually uh, I had a girlfriend as well, so it was really, really hard to to find the time to actually finish uh, some tracks. But I, I'm really not 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 worried about that. I know when when I build a, a structure with which I can uh, maybe hire some admin people and accountant people, so I can focus just in the creative, talking to to the composers and actually writing my own music because I'm I'm dying for it. Right. And um, so the different composers um, that right for you um i know some of the people who watch our show um are composers themselves and trying to get into the trailer music world do you take submissions are you looking for more people or or is it more the case that you have certain people that you go to um kind of from your your side down uh, or can people I do have... or or is it both uh, it's, it's actually both i know uh, the ones that i trust already the I know that for real they're going to do a great job and it's going to be top notch but I'm also open I actually get submissions every day mm -hmm. and I'm sorry if someone has uh, written to me already and I didn't reply I just can't do it everything but I will yeah <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm 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 open to submissions I there's some great people out there and I would be uh, stupid if I don't listen to them so maybe if next. what if say you're a, a budding composer or maybe you're really good and you want to get some placements with a trailer music library um, like your company or you, they want to be one of your artists, um, would you recommend to them that they 
do some music and then send it to a bunch of different places? Or would you rather them send you something first and so you can have an exclusive, you know, first listen and decision? Um, do you like them to be on your team for a long time or? Um... Exclusivity. Uh... Are you there? Um, actually, I don't mind if they, some of them have uh, have worked and still work for other uh, houses based in LA. Okay. And I don't mind that. It's just sometimes if you want to succeed, I think I'm just new on this. Yeah. I'm really, I, I don't have so much experience, but I feel like if you work with everything else, like with, with the other, with the composers that are uh, writing for, for any other uh, library just you're not standing out for anything it's like you're not the, you're not different right right so so how does my, it, in a genre that's so can be so formulaic i mean trailer music builds and builds and builds and builds and bam you know you're out um how does someone who's starting out or who is trying to get these you know contacts within the industry how do they find their voice and find their own unique sound so that they can write something that's big and epic, um, but not sound like everybody else that they can, you know, approach you and, and you could be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing because of what, what is that? Ah, that's a tough question. It has to be a balance of great production, which is, uh, I think is maybe is even more important than musical talent uh, because at the end of the day we're not doing a film score mm -hmm. we're doing music but if they try their houses when they cut even if we're going to play the, um, the 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 next the trailers we've done they usually take the most sound designy part of it and the track has some melody and some structure and and stuff but they just get the heat and the 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 the, the chunk with just balls and sound design. Right, they want that uh, sonic candy that's going to stand out. Um, yeah. Maybe you have a nice melody going, and you love that part, but then it's like some weird thing that yeah. someone hasn't heard. They're going to license that little snippet. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Uh, it, that's the thing. Uh, even for the uh, for the stems, I've been required is just they're interested in the most rhythmic and really not melodic uh, side of it. Interesting. Of course, if you are, it, it's just depending on, on the on the on the movie you are exactly uh, you are well, writing for. Well, you are not actually uh, writing for a movie, but is going to be, end up used in a movie, in a particular movie. Right. So maybe I, I'm finding that, that that for my stuff, they love they 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 have um, required stems for some melodic stuff, but at the end of the day, they just placing actually the, the the placements that are happening is just about sound design aggression guitars and uh, very very rhythmic and rocky mm -hmm. i don't know if that's a trend for 2013 and i don't know how it's going to be next year but it's just trends right, and stuff right right um well let's go ahead and take a listen to and and watch a couple of these trailers here um so the track used in these ones we're going to watch a couple of trailers is called Shredder and we heard a little bit of it in the promo video um, and the composer is Attila? Yep, Attila Atz. Attila Atz, okay. Um, so let's go ahead and watch the Star Trek Into Darkness TV spot and we'll hear this in action here. Okay, and then we've got one more here. Let's just go ahead and play it. Um, this is the Oblivion TV spot featuring the same cue. Okay, so excellent. That's uh, you know one cue will get placed, um, you know, one time, and then maybe if six months down the road or a year later, it'll show up again. But to have it all on, on all these summer blockbusters, that's pretty amazing. Nice, nice work. Thank you. Um, so what's uh, what's coming up next for Really Slow Motion? I'm, I'm assuming you guys are uh, getting ready for a next album or something like that. Um, is it more of the same or what kind of genre can we expect to hear from you next? Uh, at the moment, we have in production four more albums. 
uh, one of them is um, uh, uh, just sonic tools, uh, sound design tools. Um, and then three solo albums, which the composer are going to be Attila doing his crazy sound design guitar stuff. Mm-hmm. Then Thomas mm-hmm. Bull, who is going to be so, so to be doing his thing, but probably some uh, hybrid epic stuff. And then we have all the androids, who is going to be doing some horror um, cues for a real slow motion. And then um, still, uh, we kind of started doing Cosmogony 2. I say Cosmogony 2 is, is just like gathering all of us and doing some all the melodic. But now at the moment it's just on hold and we will be doing it soon probably. And then some other stuff we're doing just for, just for TV use as a library, not really a trailer um, stuff. Okay. But these three albums, these three albums by Thomas Attila and all the Android are purely um, trailer uh, flesh. Okay. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, and then we're gonna get to hear some Agus tunes soon. Or... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully, okay. maybe I'm trying to because they're easier. Uh, in fact, uh, in, uh, in a matter of of just taking the time of doing it uh, as a sound design in the sound design um, release. I hopefully it will be throwing in some some noise <laughs> yeah yeah great um so i want to talk a little bit about um the way you guys approach um production actually before i go into that um let me just um one more time uh let everyone know that we are live on twitter at trailer sound um you can either tweet us or tweet agus questions um at trailer sound or if you're watching on the Ustream page, you can go ahead and ask any questions on the social stream section, um, and we can. Uh, and then I'll be sure to ask Agu. So please go ahead and ask any questions, and uh, we'll make sure we get we make some time for that. Um, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, your guys' production and what you go to for. Um, different samples or live stuff and how you blend those two to make the highest quality product you can. Um, So the age-old question that composers ask all the time, um, especially younger ones, is um, there's all these great sample libraries about, you know, out. Um, Can I use those all the way to the final product or do I really need to go get an orchestra or can I add some live instruments to it to make it more realistic? Or what's your guys' philosophy on that, and how do you approach that for your music? Uh, so far, we've just been dealing with uh, samples. But for me, and some the odd solo cello, for instance, or voice, you, 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 it, that's easy to do at home with a proper mic and stuff. Uh, but as you know, orchestra are not cheap. Right. And um, but if you want to succeed in this, in this, you, your production skills have to be like second to none. It's just no, no, no other way around it. And so does me, that mean? Just... I, I, to me, that implies that if I go and buy, you know, a three hundred dollar or five hundred dollar sample library for orchestra, um, that I still need to do more stuff to it to make it realistic? Is it going to be ready to go out of the box and I'm going to be able to do stuff? Or um, in, in your mind, well, what, I, what do I need to do uh, to get to something that's going to sound ready for a movie trailer? Uh, just, I, it's really, really important to listen to what's out in there because it's not just orchestral uh, production. It's also rock, for instance. And it's not easy to, to place a drum kids in a in an orchestral uh, track and um, for instance out of the box of the samples some of them some of, of the libraries which which this level in the, la- in the in the later latest three years is so high uh, some of the sample libraries sound better out of the box than others but all of them are are good enough to to, to sound good it just depends on your production skills good reverb and maybe some specialization, or whatever you call it, sorry, uh, skills. I think that's a good tool. That's my tip. Just get some good uh, 3D reverb to place your instruments and stuff. That, that 
really can make the difference. Uh, is there one mix. that you recommend? One that you use as your go-to? I'm experimenting with a couple now, but I've been using, it's pretty cheap, the Parallax Audio one. Okay. I don't think they, it's gone up uh, further than 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. It's still pretty cheap. I would go for that. There are others like the Ircom one. But that's pretty expensive and really complicated. I don't like complicated stuff. Just give me headache. Yeah, me too. I like easy plugins, <laughs> easy stuff. And just you know, get it done. Make it sound good for me. <laughs> and of course, if you have the budget to mix proper uh, samples and a uh, string section of an orchestra, which could be cheap, way cheaper than a full orchestra. Uh, you can get to the real thing and big full string sound uh, like uh, surprisingly easy. For instance, with like it, just talking about samples like Hollywood strings and stuff, you really can blend it. Uh, we, we in real slow motion we have um, experimented with with that with with uh, the composers and uh, and it's really really the way to go. We're gonna we're gonna experiment on that for next. Uh, releases. Well, I want to take a listen to another cue here. Um, on your SoundCloud page, you've got one called, um, oops, hold on, um, Ruins. And I think, if I remember correctly, this one does use what you're talking about, where it's got some sampled stuff, but then there is a solo cello part. Um, is that a live solo cello? Is that what you're talking about here? Yeah, that's Blake Robinson from Australia. He's playing playing some cello in his own track. Oh, excellent. Okay, so let's take a... It's a VI <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Let's take a listen here. This track is called Ruins, and this is off the Cosmogony album. Uh, come on. Hold on one sec here. Let me refresh this page. Here we go. Great, um, beautiful cue, um, and I really like how. Oops, um, I really like how there is that live element over the top of that, and really brings that that flavor to it. 
Um, we'd have a question here from um, Prod House News X Info. Which composers are going to collaborate with Really Slow Motion soon? Can you give any info on that, on who we should be expecting music from, besides the ones you already mentioned, maybe um, ones we haven't heard of, or whatever? Uh, uh, well, um, actually, uh, just the ones I've been working on, which are, I hopefully I don't forget anyone, please, is Ivan, Ivan Torrent, uh, Vivian Chava, uh, Attila, which is going to be a, uh, he's going to do a solo album. Then Dirk Ellert, um, Thomas Vo, he's going to do a, a, a new solo album. Audio Android, solo album as well. Then a couple of Spanish guys, uh, Fran Soto who's going to be one of the guys doing, alongside Cez Villa, they're going to do um, uh, an album together for TV purposes. Hopefully some of the tracks could, could fit the trailer industry, uh, but let's see how it goes. Then who else? Mateo Pascual, another Spanish guy who's been around for 10, 12 years, doing really, really great stuff. Who else? Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting Blake. Blake Robinson. He's also uh, he's as you could hear. He's the virtual instruments guru for me. It's just his his production skills with fake instruments is unreal. Mm. And uh, he's so talented. He's he's melodically and, and the way he structures songs and um, his symphonic uh, sense is just great. So he's going to do a solo album as well. Cool. And um, who else? Who else? Uh, lots of people. Um, and some big names, which I really can't uh, say now because I have to confirm. Okay. But I I'm sure I, I left someone. Uh, and I'm really sorry about that, but just too many names. And hopefully me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, time. I have time. You talk about making sure that people are listening to other styles of music, rock, etc. Where do you get your inspiration? Do you listen to film scores? Do you listen to other trailer music, um, pop music, rock? Where do you mostly get your inspiration? Uh, or is it from, from other stuff? Anything, anything. I've been doing uh, with my guitar work, I've been playing anything, virtually anything, from, from really extreme uh, heavy metal to gospel, uh, funk, disco, rock, really cheesy pop, uh, everything. And um, since I was little, I was really interested in film scores and classical music as well. So if, if, if it's just a, ma a, a matter of opening your ears and letting everything to come, to, to get in your brain, because for, it will go out somehow, rhythmically or melodically and uh, uh, structure-wise, and production-wise, the way the instruments interact together, uh, that's really important in an orchestra situation, but in rock, it's even more important. It's just a matter of just like three, four instruments, and they fight for, for just their slice, and they really have to get along. And anything, anything, just open your, your ears and listen to anything. That's my advice. That's what's been working for me. Uh, so far. Okay. Um, and of course, if you want to get into trailer music, just watch what's out there. Yeah. Any, any trailer, just look and listen and how, how they use it. So from your just point don't... of view, what's next in trailer music in, in general? Um, say from now until June 2014, uh, where's trailer music going? Is this choir is past gone. Uh, uh, dubstep is is gone, and now is I think it's just sound design, right? Really, sound design, boom. Not even Brahms. Brahms are gone as well. I think we had enough of Brahms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think I, I really think just uh, synth, uh, like really aggressive guitar uh sound design, really, really rhythmic. Uh huh. 
I, that's 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 what I think. And hopefully, or maybe I'm I'm wrong, and they just the industry goes where I'm going. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you gotta you gotta find that trend, right? You gotta make that new thing. Well, you heard it here first. If it goes, you know, in, in a sound design guitar route, we heard it from Agus first. Um, yeah. What what is it for you? Got a couple more questions here. Um, what is it for you that um, that attracts you to trailer music and epic music? Sorry, sorry, it just cuts uh, the. Sure. Connection. Yeah. What is it for you that attracts you to epic music and trailer music in general? Epic music. What do you mean by epic music? Orchestral, choir, big. Yeah, you know, drums. like like the the stuff we're hearing. Um, it's you know, some people uh really gravitate to it. They they really like it. Um, other people, it's you know, too over the top or whatever, and they'd rather listen to country music. Um, what is it for you that drives you to keep doing this and to uh really be interested about this style of music? Usually, uh, epic music give me gives me goosebumps. Uh, this big sound, usually emotional sound, like really lush um, and soft violins, big full uh, ensemble. And I think, I don't know, I can talk by, by other people's mouth, but I think that's the way it, it's uplifting sometimes, even if, if the, the track is not uplifting. It, it, it's, is it makes you happy. Uh-huh. Sounds cool. That it's the the good old goosebumps test, you know. If you get those goosebumps, yeah. you know it's good. You may not know why. <laughs> um yeah, yeah, yeah. So, last question here. If anyone else has any more questions, um speak now or we'll talk to you guys next week. Um uh what's the best part about your job? What what do you think, you know, if you wake up in the morning, I've got the best job. What is it? What's the best part about your job? Just talking to the composers, uh, that's really uh, fulfilling because uh, we, we uh, interact in a creative way. We usually don't do um, emails per se. Uh -huh. We actually chat and Skype and stuff. And that's, I really don't know. Um, for me, I use, I'm used as a composer for, for trailer music. I'm used to do it on 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 email which is good but and I, I think this way I'm doing it is just it, it makes everything much more friendly and much more the composer feels like he really wants to be in in here right and that's probably the reason why it's so time consuming for me because uh, you put in that personal relationship so I, because yeah yeah because yeah. I really really spend hours to talk about just 10 seconds of a track right. with someone right and then we talk about life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's 12 uh, a.m. and I haven't done anything. Yeah. But it's quite rewarding because then two days ago, the guy finishes the track and he's so great. And you want to laugh and you want to kiss him and hug him. Yeah. And then this is really rewarding. And then and he's then glad that he's on Skype. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and then the other, the business side is so uh, great when you open your email and you have this quote request by a big studio and it's like yeah <laughs> awesome well we keeps you going yeah i mean you guys have been you know really successful really fast and i hope you know that it keeps going like that at that rate that's that's amazing we've got one more uh question here from carl mathis um he's asking we kind of talked about this a little bit already but um maybe if you can answer this briefly what could be the best way to make the first contact with a company um, a trailer music company, a couple tracks or a whole reel. Couple of really good tracks, even if it's one, even if it's one, that is is great. He, someone at the other end will will reply you. I that's what I would do. I I don't mind if he sends seventeen tracks. It could be just one because if if there is one, even just thirty seconds, you know, if you laugh after. Eight seconds. Yeah, you you got it. If you get those goosebumps, you're good to yeah. go. So yeah, but production is really important. Yeah, so it's really really important. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, well, Agus, this has been awesome. It's been great to get to know you a little bit more. And uh, again, I wish you massive amounts of success in the future, in the near future, with really some motion music. 
Um, and we hope to hear some of your tunes soon too. Um, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. So less Skype and chat, <laughs> where, more writing. Where can people um, contact you guys and where can they find you on the internet? You could go either to the website, which is www.reallyslowmotion.com, email me to contact at reallyslowmotion.com, or just go to uh, Facebook, Real Slow Motion, add me as a personal contact. I have lots of contacts for, for trailer music in my personal site, and YouTube, Twitter, SoundCloud, just type really slow motion in, in Google and then it'll pop up huh? yeah great is there anyone you would like to give a shout out to or thanks or anything before we go all my composers which I'm I'm dreading to to miss one so I won't name them but all of them you know who you are and lots of uh, you and Rain Benzel yeah he's the one doing the promo video and I think he's he's been key for this success I I, I really think so and uh, my family and my friends and um, you know everyone great well thank you so much Agus we'll catch up with you later and um, everyone make sure to tune in next week for an all new episode and we'll see you next time on Trailer Sound